Thank you so much for either joining live stream or watching this video either on our YouTube channel or on our Google um, training page as well. So we have many ways to learn more about Google Workspace. With that, again, the topic is beginning Google, Google Slides and you can see the list of objectives here. Just a friendly reminder, you can always navigate um, throughout the document by using the table of contents to navigate the long document and the list of objectives. Or you can always use the outline mode and go ahead and navigate to each objective as well. With that, let's get started with objective one. Let's explore some resources. We won't stay here long at objective one, but I do want to point out some very valuable resources here. Um, one thing is many people will be switching from PowerPoint to Google Slides, and maybe you just don't understand how it functions and trying to compare um, both apps. So if you click on this link, you will then take it to a, um, in, to a resource like this, and it will give you a comparison. What were you doing in PowerPoint? How would you do it in Slides and vice versa, or pretty much vice versa, right? Um, so it's a comparison at a glance. Um, please know it's slightly different depending on Office versions. But with that, um, this will give you a great way of how did I do this here? Um, how will I do it in Google Slides? So definitely check out that if you haven't done so. The other um, option is then on our Google Helps website. The other resource that's on that Google Doc objectives is the um, option of a cheat sheet, get started in Google Help. As mentioned in previous trainings, those resources are very beneficial for you because Google has a few more employees that are her team and it's always up to date. The cheat sheet's a great way to get started with Google Slides. I mean, you haven't figured out what Google Slides um, is. It's just a way to build presentations in a web browser. I um, mean, many of us know what PowerPoint is. It's the same thing. Um, you'll just know it's called Slides or Presentations. Um, it has different slides that lets you do animations, um, transitions and so much more. So just be aware that there's a lot of resources on the Google Help. Also, once we're done with this video, we will embed the YouTube channel um, playlist for slides on this page as well. So you'll have this in multiple ways to learn more about Google Slides. So what I, this is thinking and not following my um, <laughs> script today, um, what we'll do is go ahead and get started and organize, and that's where we're gonna start again. So this is objective two. Where can you find and create slides? As you are well know by now, we can go to docs.new, sheets.new, and so on to create um, other doc editors. Same concepts of work within slides.new, um, drive new Google Slides. You can go to your Google Drive, go to new, go to slides. You can go to the waffle and go to slides. Same concept as in doc, other doc editors such as sheets and docs. You have templates available as well inside um, slides or in drive. So be aware of that. Also, if this is your first time attending any of my trainings and maybe you're new to Google Slides and want to learn more, um, what I have a passion for is to make sure you have some hands-on materials to do so. So with that being said, we are at objective two. We're gonna make a copy of this slide and we're going to um, use that as our template. Also, since we're just trying to be more feasible, we're going to make a copy of the additional chart activity as well. So we're going to do some housekeeping items to get prepared on learning more about Google Slides. So I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this Google Slide. If you're following along, I strongly encourage you to do the same thing. Go ahead and make a copy of this Google Slide. Best practice is to always name the file. In this case, it's a Google Slide. Name that Google Slide um, and make it something that you know, maybe like training. Um, instead of copy of, so I'm going to go ahead and rename it. And I'm going to always do best practice and make a good infrastructure. You might have already have an infrastructure that you might want to put this in. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and make another um, folder infrastructure and call it Google Slides Training. You can call it whatever you want. But keep in mind, you can always make a folder on the go. This is just kind of repeat. Um, we've talked about this many times. In all my trains, it's just good practice to always have a good infrastructure when you're working on a project. Um, it's just something we're all used to doing. It's just slightly different in Google Drive. So now I've put this new document that's a copy of that now I in Trainer 13 is myself. That's my persona today. I own this document, um, this Google slide. And so this is mine to mess with. 
um, just to keep um, this rolling, we're going to do the same exact thing. Make a copy of this sheet. We'll explain this sheet later um, during our chart activity, but let's make it our own in this process just to help us not bounce back and forth. We're gonna go ahead and file, make a copy of this chart activity, this Google Sheet, and do the same exact thing. So we'll be ready and prepared when we're ready to navigate to that particular objective in our training exercise today. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm just going to remove copy of, we'll talk more about this now, we're just getting prepared and going to put it in our nice new infrastructure that we just created. So as it's syncing, I'm going to go ahead and rename it to something that I will remember. And I'm going to put it in that same infrastructure that I just created. And to do so, I can either go to the file move to option or I can wait to look for the file folder icon to appear as it just seems supposed to be slow for me today. It always seems to when I am training. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that full, this exact sheet into my new Google Slides training folder. Again, you can name it whatever you want, but that's just how I'm going to stay organized today. So now that we are organized and ready to go, um, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to the objective three so we know what we're going to do. Um, but again, we're going to mirror exactly the training script here, and also you'll be able to work on the exact same document. So it'll be great for you to actually see exactly what we're doing and be able to manipulate um, exactly what you have on your own file as well. So objective three is understanding tables and format painter. Um, also, before I navigate back to the template that we're going to work on today, please make note anytime you see in the Google Doc a book that is a re additional resource regarding that particular objective. If you see a video icon, that's going to take you to a video icon as well, or a video like YouTube or Google Drive to learn more about that particular objective. So um, just be aware of additional resources are available in the objective script as well. Objective three, understanding tables and format painter. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work on our slide deck today and we're going to work on this today and do this together so in the very first thing we're going to do is go to um slide two go to slide two and we're going to um, look at the exact table that we have here um, we have a table here that says app description and link so we can see that maybe we might want to adjust that table to look a little bit better than what it appears on the screen um, so what we can do is we can look at the objectives and look back and see what we recommend, what our objectives and what we need to do on this particular slide. But I do want to make note, I try to make it even easier for you today. If you notice at the bottom of the screen, you have your speaker notes and you'll see the same exact descriptions of what we're going to do or instructions, whatever you want to call for that particular slide that we're working on. So we're just trying to make us less toggling back and forth, but this is what we're going to do in, the, in theory, right, in this particular slide. So this is objective three, and we're gonna work on making this table look better than it does now. And so we're gonna learn how to deal with tables inside Google Slides. So first thing, let's do some editing and formatting within the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit the table header and make it bold and different italicized. So this is just simple um, text editing. We're just going to highlight um, the first column row, unlike what I just did here. I said simple and then I can't do it. So I'm going back to slide two, excuse me, slide two. And I'm going to highlight row one, if it'll let me. Oh, okay. So highlight, this is what I wanted you to do. Highlight, excuse me, highlight the word app. Let's do it this way. This is what I wanted to do. Highlight the word app. Make it bold by clicking on the toolbar and choosing bold, okay? Then make it um, a different font if you want, or you can go ahead and change the font color by clicking the A, or you could always go to format, 
and look for the options there as well. You can go to text. You can see the different things. You can always make it bold, italicized, the size, the color, um, the highlight, capitalization. You have a lot of things under the more option or under the format option. So whatever works for you. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it, make it bold, and I'm going to make it a different color just to make it stand out. I'm going to make it um, purple. Okay. So now that I have the app word, my first header row column, um, column A1, what I would say, cell A1, right? Um, I would like it to look the same throughout my um, header row. So an easy way to do that is highlight the word app now that you have it formatted the way, and there's no wrong way. This is just plain, right? This is not something you have to worry about making it exactly the way I look. It's just making sure you understand how I'm doing it. So with that, I've highlighted the word app and up on the top on the left hand side, there is a paint roller. And if you hover over it, it tells you it's a paint format. This is like better than sliced bread. When you click on it once, it will copy the format that you have selected. So in this case, it's copied the purple font and it's bold. OK, now if I want, I can highlight and match that particular word that i want to match that format so what it's doing it's only copying the format and nothing else so it does not change the content uh or the context of that word it's just that's what it is it is now um purple you can also do this throughout the slide deck this can be very helpful if you highlight the word or area that you want to copy the format if you double click the paintbrush twice so i'm going to click on it twice then it um, can be a repeatable action. So it means I can change the word link to purple. I could change the word slides to purple. And I don't have to go back and forth. It's an ongoing action. And I know that because you can see that the paint roller is highlighted in yellow, orangish, whatever color you want to call it. It's the selected tool. If I don't want to be no longer painting, I would just un. I would click on it to uncheck it, or I could hit the escape button. But that um, format paintbrush is like awesome. You can do the same things in docs as well with the double click. The single click is available both in docs and available in all docs, sheets, and slides. So it's a really nice feature. Some other things as you can see that our table is kind of distorted. It's not it's not distributed equally. Um, so what you do know is I've been told, I tell you guys a lot that right click is your best friend. You can always right click and you will see that you have a whole bunch of options to deal with this particular item that is selected. In this case, we're dealing with tables. So if you um, notice, if we click on the table, you will see if you click on the table like I just did, oops, and I'm right clicking, oh my, I'm just struggling today. There we go. Right clicking in the table, as you guys just saw me fumble, right clicking on the table, and then you'll notice there's a whole bunch of options you can do, such as insert row, insert row below, insert column, and et cetera. I don't want to spend time over and over going through every single scenario. Those are pretty simple actions, just probably the concern that you have is where do I find it and how do I locate it to know how to do that. So notice that you have a shortcut to do that. There's always multiple ways to do things in Google land, um, but I do find the right click um, the easiest way to do so. Um, with that, you'll notice one of the things that you're probably not as familiar with is um, distribute rows and columns. So if I hit distribute columns, you will see then I will have that option to, it evenly distributes them. So it's evenly distributing them instead of me manually trying to adjust that. Okay, so now my table is getting to be looking really nice. So again, just to show you where that was at, that's just a right click and you will be able to see that there's distribute columns and distribute rows. So that evenly does it, it just takes out the guessing game. Um, so it's just a really nice feature as well. Make note that you do have some format options as well. So be aware of that so you can get really fancy within your table as well. With that, let's go ahead and look back at our table. I'm going to unclick and get out of the right click um, shortcut. 
you will see under link, you see that there is a hyperlink in there in the sense of the long URL. One of the things I want to do is I want to make it an active link. Not only do I want to make it an active link, I also want to make it rich text. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the word or highlight the URL, HTTPS, blah, 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 just as I've shown. I'm going to highlight that. And I can always right click and choose the option to do link if that's an option, or I can do insert link. I could do control K, or I could go up to the toolbar and find the link icon. So there's multiple ways to insert a link. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then you will notice that it has um, a underlying function. And if I click on it, it will then take me to that particular URL. Again, that is not very um, appealing to the end user. It's just kind of clunky. So I want to adjust it and make it a rich text. So I really want it to say Google Help website instead of that long URL. So what you can do then, once you've made a, a link, a hyperlink, you click on it and you will see that you have several different options. When you click on that, click on this link down here, but when you put your cursor in the link area, you then see copy link, you see a pencil and you can remove link. Well, that's not what I want to do in this case. I actually want to edit the link. Click on the pencil. You will then get a pop-up box that will tell you what the text will be displayed and what's the URL that it's going to. So the first box in that pop-up is the text. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and type in Google Help website. But obviously, I don't want it to go to a different URL. I want it to go to that particular URL, and it's staying there. So I'm just going to hit Apply. So now that you can see that looks a lot better, I can now take it. It'll take me directly to that Google Help website um, as shown. So that is a way to do rich text as well. So the other thing you can do is just do some basic formatting. Um, you can always change the border of a table. Um, so you can go ahead and go to format options as an option to do that, I believe. Bear with me um, as I say that. And I'm wrong on that. So you can actually go up here and you can change the uh, pixel size and you can change the color to do whatever you want. Or you can highlight it all because you can see it just changed that. And I can go back up here and choose one or two, change the color again, pink, whatever the case may be. Um, I wonder if you can go to format options this way. Same thing. Huh, thought you could do it there. Otherwise, I could have probably gone to format, yep, borders and line. That would have been an option. So you can see under format, you can see there's border color, border weight, um, et cetera. Okay. Um, so there's many ways to do things. One thing I find with slides, it's not like my most um, used app, however. So I just kind of fumble sometimes trying to find what I'm looking for. So 90% of the time I'm right clicking. So bear with my um, inconsistencies as trying to find things um, as well as I'm just not as habit. But we just always have to remember, right click is your friend. And also, what action are you trying to do? If you're trying to format something, more than likely that feature is going to be under format, right? If you're inserting, such as inserting a link, that link option is going to be available. And Google will only give you what's available for that particular item that you may have selected as well. We also know that the toolbar is a dynamic toolbar. It's only going to give you what you need. Um, when you have a particular item selected. So it's not going to give you a whole bunch of options that you do not need to use at that current time for the item that is selected. Those are just good things to know. So don't think like, um, just to be aware of that as well. Just a few other things you can do to uh, make this um, table uh, more appealing is just you can always highlight the area and you can choose the option to change the alignment to the top because I don't like it centered in the middle of the box. So you can always go up to the top here. You have an option to line, I'm sorry, not this one. You can go to the alignment where you can do left, centered, right, or justified, which will do it this way. 
But a lot of times, a lot of people don't realize that you can actually align things to the top, the middle, or to the bottom. And that can really depend and give you a better um, option. So in this case, I moved everything up to the slides um, and so on. So that is just kind of a way to work with the table. It's not pretty. You can adjust the size this way. Very similar things um, as you choose. So just be aware of that. So you can, um, just to be clear, you're inserting a table. You can always go to insert table and you will see then that's just a very similar concept as well if you need to do a blank one for future instead of having one already in there. And the other thing is it's really cool to copy from a Google Sheet um, into Google Slides and it will consider it as an object and you can link the data. So a lot of us will have a lot of table formatting or data inside of Google Sheet and that's a really good way to copy and paste it inside your slide deck when you're presenting as well. So keep that in mind as well. With that, we're going to move on to objective four. Um, this is where we're going to kind of dive into more, uh, more visual appealing options like inserting shapes, designs, grouping, um, and so much more. And the next objective that we're going to do next is insert images and word art. Um, so we're going to focus on inserting images and word art in objective four. So going back to this template that we're working on today, we're going to move to slide three. Just a friendly reminder, the instructions that we're going to do are in the speaker notes as well. So with that, we have a slide here that says slides versus PowerPoint. So my vision on this particular slide is to have a picture of a Google slide icon and then versus VS as word art. And then we're going to add a PowerPoint logo. That's our goal with some adjustments in between, but that's my vision. That's what we're going to do next. So we're going to, first of all, insert an image in here. So we can always go to insert, and then you will find the option to insert an image. We can always select the different destinations to select from. In this case, just to make it easy and mirror, go ahead and click on image search on the web. Then on the right-hand side, you will see a option to search google.com these are um, allowed to be used um, with no copyright issues so i'm going to go ahead and type in the word powerpoint and so i'm just typing in the powerpoint there's no wrong one to select from just one that makes sense so just to make things easy i'm going to go ahead and select the very first one that appears on my screen um, and go ahead and click insert. There's no wrong PowerPoint to insert. This is just practicing on how to insert an image. Your image might look slightly different, might look a little big, might be a little too small. So we want to first thing is to adjust the size in um, to kind of match the proportion of the other uh, icon that we have, which is the Google Slides icon. So when you insert an image, and if you can't see it now, just click on the image, but you want to have the blue selected lines. It's always good practice to adjust an image proportioned. To do that, you would go ahead and go from the corners and drag it from there. It will keep it proportioned. Um, you'll just know that it'll keep it all proportioned. We don't want to distort it. If I moved it from here, the PowerPoint is going to get it pretty wide and not look quite right, right? So we always want to drag from the corners. There's another trick. You can always hold the shift button. I will make sure that it is stay in that exact ratio so that's just a tip you can have but my goal is to kind of match up the size that looks similar to the slide icon feel free to do the same it's not going to be perfect but the goal is that it looks somewhat additional looks like similar size so i'm going to go ahead and move it and now that i know it's selected in blue it's a move icon you can see up at the top that my um, icon of the arrow is a selection so it tells me what i'm doing and so when it's highlighted um, you can see that my toolbar has changed as well. We're focusing on what the item that was selected is a image. So you can see up here that these are now um, different options and we'll discuss some of them in the future. As well as so if you right click on an image, you're gonna get a whole bunch of other different options that you may not have recognized. So again, always be aware of the item that you have selected, okay? Now, the other thing we're going to insert here is we're going to insert word art. Um, it gives you more of a dimensional look instead of text box like this. 
gives you more of a 3D um, dimensional. Um, so what we can do is we can go to insert and we're looking for the word um, word art. I'm going to go ahead and select word art. And then your box appears. Go ahead and read what the small text says. If you wanted multiple lines like I love you, three different lines, right? Um, you would have to use shift enter to get to the next line, to get to the next line. So we're not gonna use that for verses. It's just a one word or BS, uh, but be aware if you want to, to make multiple lines, you do need to use the shift enter as directed on that screen. Once you've typed in the word, in this case, we're just gonna type in VS. Um, go ahead and type in the letters VS and hit enter and it will hit save. Then you can see um, where it should appear. There it is. It's currently in Arial font. It's got a gray fill and a black fill or a borderline. Not really going with the color schemes that I have here. So let's go ahead and adjust it. There's no wrong way. Just be aware of what you're changing. So the first thing we're going to do is just change the fill from gray to something else. So up here, I'm going to click on the bucket icon, which is the fill icon, and I'm just going to stick with yellow. Again, no wrong color, but just going to select something different. I'm going to go ahead and change the borderline to just slightly something different to maybe gray is fine. I'm going to make the width of the border a little bit bigger. So I'm just going in order here. So four pixel. Okay, I'm starting to like a little bit better. I can make it a dash. I can do all sorts of different things. One thing that many people do not do, though, and I think they forget, is you can change the font because that can really make it um, really look more um, dimensional in the sense um, or outlined is probably the correct word. So I'm going to go ahead and just change it to ultra. Um, but again, you can change it to whatever, but it's starting to look like a more of a stencil font and I like it. So now it's getting the way I, I want it to be. I can make it bold and so much more. So as many other items, you can always adjust um, the size of it to fit more into the area that you want. So in theory, my thing is, you know, it's like a, a wrestling match between slides and PowerPoint, right? Um, in a funny way, please know. So with that, we've got slides versus PowerPoint and we've got a thing there, right? So it's just a really good way to get, um, more of a stencil like option so we, what we did in that objectives was insert an image and inserted word art and just adjusted a few formatting um, options there for you so that was objective four i think we're ready to dive into objective five so let's go ahead and go to objective five Objective five is we're going to create a image much like this, okay, in theory. We're going to make an image like this, but what we'll find out when we get to the slide, it's not one image. We're going to have to crop and do some adjustments to make it one image that looks just like that. So objective five is we're going to learn about shapes, designs, um, and grouping and cropping and so much more. So that's our end game is to make that. Um, so that's where we're going to go. So we're going to go ahead and go to slide four. And again, reminder, the instructions are on the bottom in the speaker notes if you want to look at the written instructions. So with that, notice um, if you slide to the right, you will then see this is our end game. OK, so it kind of gives you a visual of what I'm trying to direct you to do here. OK, so the first thing we notice is we do have a similar image here at the bottom. Um, with me and Jolene somewhere where the sun's at, right? Um, but we've got this instructor, instructors, Jessica, Van Havlin, and Jolene. I don't have that in this image, so we need to remove that, okay? That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to crop out the instructor's name. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back to the other screen here, or move it, scroll it to the left. I'm going to click on the image that we're in some tropical paradise. I'm going to go ahead and notice this time that it's highlighted in blue. Um, I do want to use the terminology or the action called cropping. Um, you could go up to the top and you will see there is an option to crop that way by clicking on the crop image icon. OK, that's one way. Notice the line of the the outline of that image is now black. OK, 
So it's a different visual indicator. If you don't like doing it up here and clicking on the crop image, you can always double click the image and then that will give you the same black horizontal or black line as well, which will give you the capability of cropping. So either way, that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to crop or remove other stuff that we don't want in this image. Our particular um, agenda on this one is we want to remove instructors, instructors, Jessica and Jolene. So I'm going to move that little icon that rectangle and i'm just going to cut out in theory crop right like taking a pair of scissors and cutting that area out but still leave the entire image um intact so i'm going to go ahead and notice now my black um, line is all the way to that area and i can either click off of it or hit enter and you can see now that i have cropped out the instructor's name if i go back here and double click You'll notice then you still have that part of that image still part of the image in the sense of your document but not being displayed so you can always make adjustments maybe jolene is the only instructor and i want to take it all the way to the left and cut my name out right um, just know that you can adjust that um, the other thing sometimes i will do is i will duplicate it maybe i only need the google workspace portion so I'll duplicate or copy this image and just crop out certain areas because sometimes it's just hard to find exactly what I want and so much more. So just keep that in mind. You can always crop um, the image. OK, now that we've cropped the image, I'm going to go ahead and move this up here just a little bit. I'm going to move this one down. We're kind of seeing what we're doing. We're building this together. Right. But it's two different images. So let's now add a rectangle. Notice we have a rectangle, a white rectangle, um, to kind of just get everything kind of aligned together. So we're going to insert a shape. Um, you can go to insert, and we're going to do shape. You can see there's multiple shapes. This could take all day if we wanted to try every different shape. You will have to decide what shape you want for the future. For the current time, I'm going to go ahead and just select shape and choose the rectangle okay again you could go up to the toolbar and select shape as well so now i'm going to put a rectangle over those images um, that we have selected on our page and if you don't have it looking identical as mine don't worry about it we'll get there you'll see how this will all piece together no pun intended in a minute now, it might look slightly different for you, but my fill color is um, gray. Well, that's not what I want. Our end game is to have it to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and change my fill color to white. I'm going to go ahead and click on white. The next thing I'm going to do is then change the uh, border color to red, just so we can see this a little bit easier. Is that what I wanted to do? Yes, I think it is. OK, so now you can kind of see, but where do my images go? My images are gone. So I'm going to go ahead and right click. And there is a way to um, adjust the order of the images, meaning what image do I want in front of the rectangle? So you can adjust that, right? What order? How do you want things displayed? because we're layering them, right? It's not Photoshop in the sense of lots of layers, but we do have some layering capabilities. In this particular case, we do have the option to order. And you can see then we can send the rectangle to the back of the room. I'm gonna go ahead and click send to back. Then you will see the other two images appearing in front of the rectangle, okay? So you can make adjustments. Sometimes you'll need to send it to backward, only one, step back, right? Not all the way back. Sometimes you'll need to bring it to the front. So you will need to adjust this. So we're kind of grouping and making our own image within Google Slides. So now we're going to go ahead and change the, we're going to adjust these images just to kind of line them up a little bit better. Notice as I'm lining them up, you see some options to help line things up better right you can see the um grid lines that are giving us adjustments to like hey i want this all lined up centered and good to go 
Okay, so now that we've got that, we pretty much almost have this whole thing the way we want. But what we need to do, something that we need to work on is to understand that like this is now one big image, right? It's one big image, okay? So what you can do is you can actually select all those little pieces that we adjusted and make it um, all grouped together. So what I'm doing is I'm holding my mouse down and selecting all that criteria in the selection area of the blue lines, okay? When I let go, it's selected everything in that particular area, okay? Now, I just wanna show that again because that's a really good tip. All I'm doing is holding the mouse down and I'm selecting that criteria inside there, okay? The other way to do that is just to select the items that you want. You can always click on the items that you want and hold the control button. So in that case, you may just only want this Google Help Stay for State of Iowa and I'm holding the control button and I just want the big rectangle. Notice now the only two items that I have selected is the big rectangle and the Google Help um, image but I do not have the vacation image selected. So that is a way to um, stagger or select only the few and not all in that particular area. Other way, the goal is to make sure you have everything selected. So you can either do the dragging, sometimes that's easier because it might have a whole bunch of images um, or you can do the control and just select the few that you want. Regardless, our goal is to select all of that. Now, what we're going to do now is we want to group them and consider them one image. This is very important as we get into the advanced Google Slides because what that does is it helps us with our animations because we might want this image to come in all at once, not three different components. And when you group them together, it makes it a lot easier. So this is a very important concept to understand. So I'm going to go ahead now that I've got those three items in this particular case um, selected, I'm going to right click and choose the option to group them. You can see group is an option. So now they're considered one. Okay, now you can see when I move this, it's moving the entire selection of all three of those options. Okay. Now, what's really cool is maybe this was a great favicon or a great background image, maybe whatever. That's what Google Slides really is, can make it really nice um, little animations and um, uh, pictures or so on. In this case, so maybe this is a great header for your Google Form, or maybe it's going to be in, inserted in a Google Doc, um, whatever the case may be. You can actually use a shortcut, Control-C, Control-V, copy and paste. That's awesome, we're all used to that. Um, so I don't really need to explain that one. But the other one that's kind of hidden gem is Control D as in dog. Um, Control D as in dog. So I'm gonna hit, this item is selected. So watch what happens. Control D will actually duplicate that item that I have selected. So I actually saved myself some extra clicks. So now I have several copies of that, obviously a duplicate or replica of what I have selected. So that's just another little shortcut um, that's under edit to duplicate, I think it is. Um, I always use the shortcut um, control D, but that's kind of a hidden gem and most people are not aware of that one. So now we've learned how to group things together. Um, we've done a few different things there. The one thing I kind of skipped over in the script is I do want to make sure that you do have some options when you are filling. I'm going to now ungroup these because sometimes you might want to ungroup these. I'm going to select and choose ungroup. So sometimes we need to now make some alterations. So I'm going to ungroup. But if I wanted the rectangle to have a fill in background, in some cases, that's what we need it to be. Um, this is not a great example to make it a transparent background, um, but that's important sometimes. So the fill color of this rectangle that I'm just going to select just the rectangle, I'm going to select just the rectangle, not the other two. You can always choose the option to fill. 
And there's always an option for transparent. But transparent means I can see through, right? It's going to change and um, go from there. So just be aware that's an option for you. Uh, this isn't a great example, um, but if I change the background of the actual slide, um, just for demonstration purposes, just so you can see it better, you can see then the gray comes through on the transparent one, but it doesn't come through on the white filled. So just know that transparent means it's kind of like a see-through. Obviously, it's transparent, right? You can go through. But transparent can be very helpful. Um, but in this case, it really wasn't going to be a great option because of the different um, image size. So I had to think outside the box and use a white background, okay? So that is objective four. A lot of fun tips and tricks there. Um, so be aware of that. But grouping and ordering, cropping, and all those things are very important to make really dynamic um, Google Slides. The next one is kind of on the boring side, but we're going to focus there in a minute. Objective six is spelling, special characters, bullet, numbering, and explore. So we're kind of just um, doing some things. We're going to actually use this more in the advanced because we're going to use more animations in the future. Um, so this will look very familiar in the next training as well. I'm going to go ahead and go to objective six, and which means in this case, we're going to slide five. In slide five, we can see that we have a list of reasons why we love slides. And just a reminder, we have the written instructions at the bottom in the speaker notes as well. So we want to, first of all, probably need to fix the spelling, right? Collaboration is already highlighted in red and given us a warning that is incorrect, okay? So you can always right click when something is highlighted in red and actually fix it from there as well. So if you see something in red, did you mean collaboration? Yes, I did. I could change it that way if I choose to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we spell check. It's always good. As I just shown, you can always right click, but we can always go to spelling and grammar check here as well. And um, you can ignore the ones that we want to ignore. Um, and it changed the ones that we want to change. In this case, we want to change collaboration. So I'm going to go ahead and change collaboration. Sorry for that little mix up. I was thinking something different. Um, so there now collaboration is fixed. Um, and I'm just going to stop the spell check for now. I know the, the keyword collaboration was the one that I wanted to focus on. Okay. And that's something we just need to be aware of. It's always good practice to spell check when we send out documents. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a heart in the after the word love slides. Actually, we're going to do it right here. So in the title of the Google slide, you'll notice the list of reasons why we love slides. We're going to insert a heart. Uh, we're going to use a special character option for us today. So you can actually go to insert and you have special characters. Now, this doesn't always have to be fun and games like an emoji heart. It could be um, very important um, accents or arrows or whatever the case may be that might be to, to um, indicate the type of language it is or just a certain um, thing that you're looking for. The other thing is you do have some options here. You could always search all these different concepts here, like I said, different hand strokes, um, other things that are especially needed for other languages, punctuation, et cetera. Um, I, I don't want to spend a lifetime looking at all those. But what we can do is sometimes you can't even know what the word is, which this is a true story, but we're not going to go there. Um, but you can actually draw it, right? Um, so you could actually, in this case, I'm looking for a heart. Oops, that's not a heart. That is an X. I'm going to reload this. I'm going to wipe it out, and I'm going to draw a heart. Um, so I'm going to draw a heart um, <laughs> that comes up. That's pretty good. All right. So it looks like it did, believe it or not. There's a white heart. There's other hearts, too. He even came up as a dentist. I have to try that again. We're just going to do this again. I could actually. This works out usually better. There we go. There's an orange heart. You can see there's a black heart there, whatever. And you can actually search too. So don't think that you're limited to just doing that, right? Um, so you can actually type in the keyword um, just when I'm on the spot. That's usually how things are. But that's how you can insert special characters. And you can see there's uh, plenty to choose from. 
So with that, I'm going to go out of that. That's just a little fun stuff that I always like to go over. So that's how you insert special characters. You can do that also in Google Docs as well. The next thing I want to do is just make sure that you're aware of numbering or bullets. And this is an important um, concept when you're doing animations, because um, when you're using bullets or numbering, um, it will consider a paragraph. And so sometimes when we're and presenting easy, fun, amazing, free collaboration, right? So then you might want it to come out in that way in an animation format. So it's important to be aware of how to do numbering and bulleting, okay? So in this case, I think list of reasons should be a number list. That's just my humble opinion. Um, but you can also see that up at the top, you can use any kind of bullet features as well. And you can see that there's some numbering features too. So feel free to select either one of those. In my case, I'm just gonna select the number and go from there. And this is the same concept. If for some reason I think fun should be indented, I could do the tab key. It will indent it and then go to the next um, outline mode. Um, if I don't want to use the tab key, I can always use the increase indent up at the top right hand corner or the decrease indent. And I always want to emphasize that because that is the same things that you see in Google Docs and in your Gmail. So it's important that sometimes the tab is not the most useful um, feature, but the increase and decrease indent toolbar options is the workaround. OK, so now that we have numbers, we may want to um, add another image over here. Um, we're going to do an image just slightly different this way. Um, we went to insert image um, the year earlier and went to search on the web. Well, let's check out this explore over here. We have an explore button and explore in both sheets, docs, or in both, I should say, in all sheets, docs, and slides is a very beneficial tool for you to check out. You can always find a little explore icon at the bottom right hand side of those apps, or you can always go to tools, I believe it is, and find explore there as well. It used to be called a research tool back in the day. Same concept, just a little more robust of a name. Go ahead and click on explore. This time we're going to add another heart. Um, so we're going to see what we're going to look for. Explore allows us to adjust this. You can see that it's kind of using its artificial intelligence to adjust our um, particular slide deck. We're not going to dive into that, but make note that it might give you some other recommended slide templates. We're not going to do that, but be aware that it's giving you some suggested layouts using um, its artificial intelligence. Now, the other thing you can do is you can search for your docs, which will mean I'll search your cloud um, search app, or you can search the web. So type in, in this particular search box in the magnifying glass, go ahead and type in the word love. Now, some of you may have a Google Doc or two or something that's got the word love in it. Um, so you can see in the cloud search, it's going to search um, files that have the word love in it. You can see then you can actually search your cloud search, which is uh, and a standalone app, if you didn't know that, you can go to your waffle and find cloud search and search all those things in your Google Workspace account. But in this case, you can see that it also has the options to search a particular um, file, email, et cetera, in, from here as well. So it brings that cloud search, your Google Workspace account right here without opening another tab. So how cool is that? You also have the option to do web. You will see then, let's say you are doing a research paper on COVID-19. You could then see that you can add um, a particular link in there as well, and it will cite it and give you a footnote for you too. So that's kind of nice. I don't know if it is a footnote. I can't remember. I don't think it does in here. It actually will give you the link to that is what happens, I think, on this one. It does do footnotes in docs. The other thing is you have images, and that's what we're going to do. And this one, go ahead and click on the images and go ahead and find a heart that, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. There's no wrong answer. Just go ahead and insert a heart um, and go from there. The reason I'm actually ask, adding you to do another image or is because I want to make sure you're aware of the explore option. And the best way to do that is just showing that you can add an image. But please note the purpose of this particular one is when you do from explore, it actually will link it to the source. 
which is very important when you are presenting um, to make sure you give credit where credit is due. So that is a really nice um, way to do that. And it's, you know, don't worry about copyright as well. So it gives the source um, where you're doing it. Also, it's really nice that you can go to cloud search and search all your Google Workspace information. So with that, I think that is objective six. We're going to do um, the next one is objective seven. So going back to the document, um, we are doing objective seven, which is video and video settings. Um, this is really important. So we're gonna insert a video um, and we're gonna make sure we know um, how this works inside a slide deck. So going back to the working document, I'm going to go to slide six. Again, this is a friendly reminder that you can always find the instructions at the bottom of the slide deck and the speaker notes as well. So what we're doing next is we're actually going to insert a video. Um, before we get to um, click happy, as you can notice at the bottom here um, in the speaker notes or in the Google Doc objectives, go ahead and copy this YouTube um, link. You can go ahead and copy that YouTube link. That'll just help us when we're inserting a video, okay? So go ahead and copy that YouTube video link at the bottom. And now we're going to insert a video. We can go up to the top and choose insert, and we're going to select video. Now we could search inside here in YouTube, and we could always do a search, um, whatever it might be. Um, but I'm not gonna do that. I don't know what's gonna come up. I'd just rather be a little bit safe than sorry. I'm gonna go ahead and click buy URL. And that's why I wanted to obviously give you that copy of that URL. And now I'm going to paste that URL as well. So with that, once you've pasted that URL, um, it will populate a preview of that video to kind of give you a better understanding that um, what we have. I'm going to go ahead and select that video. By the way, if you haven't noticed, we do have a new YouTube channel. Um, you might want to definitely check it out in that video that I made you just embed. We'll tell you about it. So with that, now that we've embedded the video in our new YouTube channel, you will then see that you have a format options on the back or on the right hand side. This is important. I have made this uh, mistake, so I'm going to make sure you guys don't make that mistake. Um, when the video is embedded, it's really nice. How do you want it to be done? Is this something you're going to present? And if that's the case, I would probably want to manually click on it, okay? Because how many times you hit the arrow key and then you're like, the video's talking and you're not done. So uh, that's my preference. That's my presentation preference. But by default, it's on click. Um, it's also play automatically. Uh, this is your choice. I'm going to do my best practice because I've made this mistake and it's the most interrupting thing when you're trying to present. The other thing that's really cool is maybe this video is 50 minutes long. I don't want to try to stream it when I'm presenting, right? You can actually start when you click on it or automatically at a certain time as well. So this is a very nice feature. Um, so be aware of that. Maybe you might want to play it as you're talking, but you don't want the volume to go. Right. So you might want to mute it. So this is some really good questions to ask and how you want to present it. So you have many different options there. Um, so be aware of that. Um, size, rotation, drop shadow. I, I don't always spend time on this. This is like really getting like how much time do you want to spend on formatting? My job is once you got here, you're going to find what else you might be trying to look for. The other thing I want to do, though, is um, this is going to be not something you can follow along on unless you have a video inside your drive is I just wanna make sure that you're aware of the features inside Drive Videos. So insert video, same concept, same option, but now you're not going to have a YouTube video. Many of us, just like I'm doing right now, am recording a Google Meet recording, and many of us will have uh, lots of videos stored in Google Drive, right? So let's say, for example, I'm gonna go ahead and select this Android video that's in here, and I'm, it's in my Google Drive, select. Please know you have very similar format options as you just did. One thing it's going to check when it's Google Drive is it will check your permissions. You might want to pop it open and make sure your permissions are good. It will give you a warning if it doesn't feel like it's matching the document's permissions, okay? Like it's too restrictive. 
Um, but you do also, another hidden gem, is many people don't realize you can actually start at a certain time in Google Drive videos as well. That's huge. That's a huge one. Okay, so be aware of that as well. And it's the same features. But many people don't think you can actually, in a long Google Meet recording, um, we know that can get really long, um, and you want them to actually start watching this particular area at and five minutes in, right? So that's some really nice features for you as well. So that's an easier one, but a fun one. That was objective seven, video settings. The next one is understanding charts and linked objects. So this is going back to making sure you made a copy of that spreadsheet. If you are one that is just joining now or a later time or watching this video at a later time, you will need the following document to get this spreadsheet. So go ahead and go to the bookmark, make a copy of that spreadsheet. So go ahead and make a copy, make it your own, and then you'll have it ready for you for this activity. Okay. With that, we're going to insert a chart and also understand linked objects. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the um, template that we've been working on. We're going to go to slide seven. We are on objective eight. Keep that in mind. We are inserting a chart at this current time. We're inserting a chart. So when we go to, we can go to insert and we can go to chart. Now, I'm not going to use the options of bar, column, line, and pie. Reason is most of us were actually making charts from sheets. Usually it's the data driven um, is in the sheets. And then we're trying to make it look presentable to our marketing and communications people and putting this nice visual indicator in a chart format inside our slides. That's what we're trying to do. But usually the data is stored in a sheet, right? So that's what we're going to practice today, 80-20 rule. So we're going to go ahead and click on from sheets. Now, if you made a copy of that sheet that I directed you to do earlier, you will then see a document called whatever you called it, right? And you can probably find it with the hand, but it's going to be a Google Sheet. Okay, and we'll talk more about this in a minute. But go ahead and find that sheet that you originally um, made a copy of earlier. If you don't like the grid view, do remember you can always change it to list view if you remember the name better than the actual grid view. Um, but in my case, I called it training and then you can see the hand visual to give you an indication it's the hands-on activity and it's called chart activity. Once, once you have selected that particular Google Sheet, um, go ahead and hit select and this will make sense in a minute. Inside that sheet does have a chart already built, okay? And we'll go there in a minute. But since it has a chart in that Google Sheet already, then go ahead and it will populate the sample. So if there was multiple in there, it would probably show you multiple. Notice at the bottom, it says link to spreadsheet. Yes, please link it to the spreadsheet. Go ahead and click import. So now we have a nice pie graph um, giving us some information on Google Doc editors usage. Notice now that the chart is selected on the right hand side, you do have some format options such as size, rotation, etc. Again, I'm not going over that, but be aware that you do have some of those options over on the right hand side. You also have on this particular um, chart, you can resize it as we normally do with the blue horizontal blue um, lines, but you do have a chain linked there and it says it's a linked chart options. Click on the drop down since it's selected, you will see that you have the option to open the source, unlink it, which I do not recommend unless you want the current snapshot at that current time. Linked means it's going to give you the capability of at least updating it at a later time. I'm gonna go ahead and click open source. So now as, uh, as we're doing that, it's going to open up that Google Sheet that it contains the data that's creating that chart. So let's look at this sheet. This is a sheets training, so to keep that in mind, and this is a very simple chart. I didn't go very in depth, that's not the point, but you'll notice in this particular sheet, it has three columns and it has some data for docs, sheets, et cetera. Um, as it's still thinking, it's going to my particular case when I said open source, it is going to the chart sheet inside that Google Sheet. As I mentioned, there is a chart in that Google Sheet, and so that is the, the chart that is being displayed on that Google slide. 
So we can kind of see right now that it's got 5%, 18, and 77 in Google Docs. You can kind of see that it's pulling the data from chart data in the sheet the right on the left hand side. So over here, if you make an adjustment, so let's go ahead and make an adjustment because this is the source of the chart, right? This isn't creating the chart this way, um, but this, I'm not showing you how to create a chart from Sheets that you can go to Sheets training to find that out, but this is how most people do it, okay? And inside here, I'm going to adjust the dollar, or adjust the amount of Google Docs. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it from 540 or 848 to 5,000 so we can see a pretty big adjustment as we do this. So go ahead on your own copy, adjust it to Google Docs to say 5,000. Make sure you move out of that cell so it knows that you're completed with that task. So now you should have 5,199 and 55 in the chart data sheet in that spreadsheet. Now, if you just for fun, go to the chart one um, sheet at the bottom, you'll notice that it has changed. It's a lot more blue this time, right? Um, so Google Docs has now increased to 95% and et cetera. Do you think that updated it on your Google slide? Let's go check it out and see what happened. Go back to your Google slide that you're working on and you will see then nothing has changed. Oh no, why didn't that work? Well, it gives you this box in your chart that says update. Then you can make a conscious decision. Do you want to update that data for this particular slide? Well, most people want the real time data, right? So you'll notice you have the option to click update. Now, what's really cool about it, you'll see then that slide, that chart will then have more um, blue appearing. And again, that's a great way to know that that's updated. But what you'll notice is that maybe you have multiple objects such as additional charts, five charts, six charts, et cetera, inside this Google slide, or maybe a spreadsheet that we talked about making the table and we inserted that um, spreadsheet in there and copied it in there and it's a linked object. Well, I don't want to go to each slide and do that. Okay. You have an option under tools. You will see the option linked objects. Now in this particular slide deck, we only have one linked object. That's the one we just did. So we have an option to change those linked objects individually and doing that in each slide or each object that's embedded in the Google slide our choice, right? Um, and we could do it individually over here as well. We could click on this one, say update, click on this one, update. So in this menu option, you will have the capability of update all, okay? If there's multiple ones, okay? Let me just, you guys can sit back and relax. Let me just change this one. And I'm just gonna change this to 200 just so we can see it again. Notice then, and that gives me a visual indicator in the linked object. Um, I, again, it could have multiple linked objects, not just the chart, and I would have the option to update all, or I can decide to update them individually. It's your choice. But this is very important when data is constantly changing and you're not just doing a static um, uh, option. So it's up to you on that. But that, again, that's under tools and linked objects. So it's very important when you are inserting stuff do you want it to be a linked object? Most of the time you do, you want the real time data. So now that we've done objective eight, understanding um, charts and linked objects, again, a rough training on it, but you definitely have a better understanding. What we're gonna do now is objective nine is to change layout, um, add an email hyperlink and change font. Um, I know some of this may seem a little redundant, but it will make more sense as you go into the advanced training as well. So keep that in mind, it's a dual purpose and maybe you're just not seeing the purpose yet, okay? So objective nine, you will see um, we have a basic question, contact us. We kind of want to give it more by, hey, contact us, more dynamic, more fun, more interactive, more bright, more vibrant, okay? We're kind of ending our slide deck here, right? So we kind of need to make it a little more um, visual appealing for our end users. So again, we're gonna, first thing we're gonna do is you can see the instructions in the speaker notes is we're going to change the layout to a different layout. And you're like, what do you mean layout? Well, you have the option up at the top right hand corner to change the layout of the slide. You can see there's lots of different options. This is the template that we selected when we made this particular slide, okay? 
with that, you'll notice there's some actual different ones there. We can actually select one of these other ones and we want it to be more vibrant. So I think we should select the one that says um, the section header. Let's go ahead and select section header. Now, the other thing you can do, which is actually the way I do it, I don't go up to the top. I use the right click and I select that option. And then you'll see that you have apply layout right here. So that's how I normally do it. Again, we're all creatures of habit, right? We do things the, the way that we normally do it. But knowing what our purpose is, is we're actually changing the layout, okay? So now we've got question us, it's bright and pink, yay, yay, yay. Um, let's go ahead and highlight um, contact us. Go ahead and highlight the word contact us. And we're insert a text box, right? We want to insert another link. So go ahead and click insert link, right click, insert link, control K. I don't care, get to insert link. Go ahead and this time in the box there, go ahead and type in your email address because contact us means contact me, right? Um, so go ahead and type in your own email address. And what we're doing here is how you set up a mail to hyperlink. I'm gonna go ahead and select my email address that appears and click apply. Now, I don't want it to be that teal color. I want it to match questions to match the white. So even after, because this, this green is actually being pulled from the template, the theme builder, which we will discuss more in the advanced training, um, but it's actually taking what is a hyperlink is supposed to match this color, okay? And this one, I just want to stay white to match everything else. So I don't want to use the theme builder. So I'm gonna highlight contact us and I'm going to adjust it to fit my material design. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight contact us and change it the text to white to match the rest, okay? So that's a really kind of a small thing, but it's important that you know how to change a layout. And again, it's a ripple effect and a concept that we'll um, dive deeper in that in a minute, uh, actually in advanced training, okay? So, but do know that you do have the concept. If you are familiar with layouts in PowerPoint, same concept. For those that know PowerPoint will understand the terminology of layouts and backgrounds and themes and master builders um, and so much more as we get through this um, training as well. You're used to the same terminology. The next thing is we're going to arrange our slides and change view. So I'm going back, we're doing objective 10. Objective 10 is to arrange slides and change view. So we have some different views within Google Slides. We have what we call a film strip view and we have a grid view. So let's go ahead and go back to our training document or our slide deck. And let's just see and make sure we're understanding what view we're in. On the bottom left-hand side, you will see that if you hover over, depending on your view, but I'm assuming you're in the film strip view, which means you have the slides on the left-hand side. And as you go through the film, you see the different slides, right? That's the concept, right? Let's go ahead and move a particular slide inside our slide deck into a different location in the film strip view. So for example, let's go to the um, Google Workspace is amazing slide. Um, which one do I want? Maybe it works. Oh, this is go to um, slide four right now. Go to slide four. And let's pretend that we I've selected slide four on the left-hand side. Let's pretend I really want this to be in slide two, um, in the position slide two. You can um, move the slide from beginning to the end if that might be a really good feature for you, depending on how big your slide is, a slide deck. Um, but a lot of times, in my case, I like to hold it down and I like to drag it up. And so when I'm there and I moved it, just let me undo that so you can see that better. 
so now or either way it's there but it's um it's now moved you can see if you move it up you'll see the hello the yellow line will give you indicating on where you're moving it so that's how i like to do it in the film strip view um that's one way so you just hold it down highlight it and then hold it to the location that you want to do and just be aware of the horizontal line um, to know where you're placing that slide so that's one way to ar ar arrange or rearrange your slides in the film strip view um, depending on again on the size of your slide deck you may like this way but you may also want to check out the grid view go ahead at the bottom you will see that there is an option to do grid view grid view gives you like thumbnail view of the particular slides i'm going to go ahead and close my linked objects here so i have more real estate um, but then you can see um, I have all my thumbnails. You do have some zooming capability um, to zoom in or zoom out. So again, you might want more real estate. So at the bottom, um, that will depend on your preference, but you do have some capability. So in this case, you could move the chart one to the third slide um, by just dragging and moving this. This is probably a better way to move them in the masses. Uh, if you're trying to um, think differently in the order of your presentation okay so if you wanted to get back to the film strip view um you can do that or you can work from here if this works you can always double click and go directly to that particular area as well okay so there's multiple ways to do that um, if you don't even like the film strip view um, you can hide hide it if you choose to um, and then just bring it back out if you want more real estate, depending on what you're doing on your screen. So just be aware of that little option down here um, as you arrange and change your view. The next objective is objective 11. We're going to do new slide, change layout. Yes, we're doing another change layout and add an image. So let me explain what we're going to do. This thank you. Um, is a pretty decent image okay so think of it like a picture of the grand canyon um things that are really kind of just the picture says it all right there is absolutely no words that are needed it's just the picture says it all and if you've done presentations um as a professional you are aware that less text is actually better okay um you don't want it to be a bullet point bullet point bullet point and you're expecting them to read and listen at the same time Forget it, right? Because it's not going to be word from word what you're saying. It is actually better to have more um, visual visuals so they can put that, hey, I remember we're seeing that with that context that you're talking. And one of the ways to do that is to actually just make the image stand out and make it the whole screen on your slide deck. And so that's the purpose of this, okay? So it's truly trying to provide you some cropping and so making sure that you know how to make it look really good on your slide deck the quality of the image is going to make a difference obviously um, but this is the best way i can train you but again keep that in mind as you are presenting that's a really important fact and don't need to believe me you can just google that as well i've been to enough people telling me how to present in my lifetime to know that's a really important feature okay so if you're going to go ahead and go to what we're going to do next is we don't have any more slides after slide eight. So we need to learn how to add a new slide. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select eight because where I select is going to give me um, going to help Google know where I want to put that slide. OK, but obviously now we know how to move the slides either in the grid view or the film strip view. So we know how to do that. Right. But you could either right click and choose new slide or if you love this slide you're like that's a perfect slide i just need to duplicate it i can always choose duplicate slide right you have both options in my case in our case we're going to go ahead and click new slide and then it kind of then helped me because i had to select eight and now it kind of remembered the exact same layout that was before in some cases that's beneficial right because that's where you want to go and you want to be with the same layout but in this case i don't want the same layout for this particular exercise so i'm going to go ahead and right click and i'm going to change the layout to something different in this case i just want a blank one because remember our goal is to insert an image the thank you image right or the grand canyon image word says it all or the picture says it all so with that, in this slide nine that I have here, I'm going to go ahead and just go to my explore because this is easy to insert an image. I'm going to go to explore and I'm going to. 
Um, type in, I'm going to try this, slightly off. I'm going to type in thank you, and I'm going to go to images. Awesome. So in my case, it might not be perfect for you, but we're just going to wing it if you're following along. You'll get the concept, but um, I have this thank you on board here that I want you to select if you do see it. If not, just pick the best, closest one. There's no real wrong answer. You just might not have the exact same mirror. So I'm going to insert this particular image. If you do want the exact same image, you can always go to the Google Doc and copy that and insert by URL if you choose that as well. So you can always go back and get that image as well. So one thing is it doesn't quite fit the entire slide deck, but I'm going to do some manipulations to make that work for us today. So if one thing I'm going to do is I want more real estate to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and view. I'm going to zoom and I'm going to get down to 50%. This is going to be hard for those that are watching online, but this is how I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom to 50% because I really kind of need to see the entire campus size here. And so you can see that's not quite fitting the way I want. Well, we have learned in the previous training that we need to resize proportions. So I'm going to move this over. And this is really hard to train, so it might be better just to sit and get, but you can definitely practice. But I want this to be wide enough without making it distorted. So I'm going to go ahead and drag from the corner. And I'm kind of getting this to fit the all the areas. And so I'm going to center it. I'm going to move it to the center. And now I've kind of got exact same amount on the top and the exact same amount at the bottom. So it's going to look, it's going to fill my entire slide. So the only thing I have left to do, because this particular picture, I can cut crop the top part and the bottom time bar as well. So I've learned how to crop now. And I'm going to double click because that's one way to crop, right? And I get the black line. And now I'm going to adjust this to go down. I'm just going to look for the white here. Oops. Sometimes that happens. You got to make sure you grab the black. Make sure you grab the black and not the blue. And I'm going to double click again. I didn't quite get it because I need to go up a little bit more. But you know, I'm not distorting it. I'm just kind of cropping in, and it's going to be proportioned, right? And I'm going to repeat at the bottom. I'm going to double click. I'm going to crop again. And I went too far. So, because this thing's in my way, I'm going to just remove the link for now. And voila. So it takes some adjustment. But now when I do present this, it's going to look so professional um, and so um, not distorted. And I really just kind of manipulated that picture to fit exactly with the way I want. So I'm going to go back and get, but that's one trick that I can give you is just resize it really big as long as it's a good quality picture. Um, and then use the zoom to get to this so you're not trying to scroll and try to figure everything out. So that's one of those things uh, to adjust that. We have two more things that shouldn't take too long, but we're almost running out of time. Um, but regardless, we're gonna keep going. So that was objective 11. We are ready for objective 12. Um, this is just giving you a sneak peek more so on how to use Theme Builder. And one of the quick ways we can give you a sneak peek of Theme Builder is to adjust your change your theme colors. Um, theme Builder is a master theme, so we know exactly. Um, all my slides that I use for Google Help, you'll notice they're pretty standard. Um, and But I use that same template um, for all the slide decks, and so it just makes it really easy and um, consistent in my branding, right? So Theme Builder is giving you a little sneak peek. So we're going to go to Objective 12, and we're going to go back to our slide deck that we've been working on. And I just want to give you a sneak peek of the theme builder. So I'm going to go ahead and go to view. And I'm going to go to theme builder. Now you'll see then this is kind of your master template. All we're going to do now is just to kind of see how, how cool this is 
is I want you to make note of all the highlighted pink on the left hand side. In, in slide eight and slide one, you'll notice it's the really bright, obnoxious pink. And we're going to adjust that color just to give you a quick how fast you can adjust your templates to fix your brand to your branding guidelines. We're going to go ahead and click on colors. And it already has the current theme of modern writer, just one of Google's defaults. I'm going to go ahead and select team, choose theme color. The bright pink, I'm going to adjust to a different color. I don't want it to be this obnoxious pink. Um, you guys can select any color you want, but in my case, I'm just going to go to blue just so we can see. So I'm just check, selecting the hue blue or the one of the blue options that you have down there. And you'll notice then it has a different change. So once you've selected a different color than the bright pink, um, you'll notice that on the left hand side, both your template called Modern Writer that's in the gray overlay or in the blue or in your film strip, you will see that, that those two slides particularly stand out that they are now the blue concept. So blue is now your new branding guidelines. Um, it's no longer the pink and you just changed all those slides with those templates, with those layouts all changed. In, I'm not all the slides, but this particular slide in this particular um, theme. So it's really kind of nice, um, really cool, a really good way to provide consistency. So that's a sneak peek. We will dive deeper into theme builders in the next training. Um, but you can kind of see there's some really nice options there for you. Feel free to adjust the um, other text backgrounds, three and four, just to see what has changed. Um, so you can get familiar with that concept. But that is just so you have an idea of the theme builder. The next thing is another sneak peek to the advanced training. Um, we're going to go to um, 13. We are going to um, add a motion. In this particular case, we're going to add a motion of transitions. And then we're going to make sure you skip and finally just show you um, how to present. Okay. So let's go back to, the, to our slide deck. Um, let's go ahead and just show you how it stands now. So let's go to the very first slide. So go ahead and select your slide one. You have some options when you present. It is now slideshow at the top. But I do want to point out you do have a drop down. In that drop down, you have a presenter view, which does give you the question, answer, and viewer speaker notes, which we'll talk more about in the next training. Um, but for now, we will go ahead and just click on the slide show. So when you click on the slide show, you'll notice just as it is, there's no fancy transitions to slide to slide. So do if you want to hit the arrow key, you'll go to the next slide, right? Um, or you hit with your mouse or go to the next slide. You could also see it has changed recently on the bottom left hand side is your presenter. Um, bar it used to be an obnoxious black bar, um, but they have now only see it when you hover over at the left hand side. So click on the three dots. We know by now click on the three dots. Google's got more for you. Um, a lot of things that I like to use is I will use a laser pointer um, that does help when you're trying to emphasize a particular thing in a slide. Um, so definitely and also make note of this keyboard shortcuts. Um, it's less distractive. Um, it's less disruptive to just hit the keyboard shortcuts instead of going all the way to the left and finding that presenter bar. You also can just click on this if that's the way you like to operate to go to the next slide. And you do can adjust um, where you want to go by clicking on the middle where the number is at. And maybe you want to jump to slide eight. You can always go to that particular location in your presentation. Okay. So just be aware, the pur purpose of that is making sure you're aware of the, uh, the presentation bar as well. Um, and also that you see the three dots has more options as well. Um, I like to exit my slideshow by default. I always use the escape key. Um, that is a tip that I use. We're almost done. What I want to do now is we're going to adjust our slide deck slightly and be aware of how things change. The first thing we're going to do is sometimes you have this amazing slide deck, but maybe slide two and three don't really need to be presented at this time. They do not apply. 
but I don't want to remove them and then not forget to put them back in a later time, okay? So in that case, you might wanna skip. So let's go to slide two and three. Now, you can actually, in this case, use the shift button or the control button. We know by now, control will let you alternate or select um, random things. Shift will be sequential. Um, in this case, it won't matter because we really want two and three, so the shift or the control. So it will give you the option to select more than one. So I'm gonna hold the shift button and I'll be able to select more than one in sequential order. And now I want to skip slides two and three because they do not apply to this particular presentation I am doing. So that's another where you see you can actually duplicate masses, make new slides, you can change the layouts in the masses. So that shift and control can really also expedite your slide making creation, right? So in this case, we are just going to skip the slide, okay? Now that we skip the slide, you'll notice it has the eye um, with a cross out. That kind of tells you it's still part of the slide deck, but when you click the slideshow, it will not appear, okay? And we'll show you that in a minute. So we'll make a mental note that slide two and three will not, they are skipped. Let's do one more thing so we can see the difference is we're going to give you a sneak peek of the transitions that we have available. In Google, I really don't know what they call them in PowerPoint, but there is a thing, a word that you need to be aware of is called motion. Motion by definition is both transition to slide to slide or animations, which means objects that are um, being altered or moved. Okay, so motion means something is moving. Is it the slide to slide moving or is there an object on that particular slide that you want it to do some jiggle jiggle? Okay, so with that, you're going to go to view motion and again motion is like the parent and then we've got transitions and objects just like it shows here right we got motion means the transition and then we have the objects we're not going to discuss objects today we're going to get really fancy with that in the next train but transition to slide to slide is not a very hard process it's just some really nice little tips and tricks so slide and slide would be going one to four in this case, four to five, that's transitioning to those particular slides. If you have slide one selected, go ahead and select slide transition and choose one of your favorites. It does not matter. I'm gonna go ahead and select dissolve because it's, it's more um, changed. Then you have the option to select the speed. How fast do you want this slide to dissolve to transition, right? How fast do you want it to dissolve? That's up to you. Okay, you can toggle that and you actually hover over. It will tell you how fast it will do and how slow it will be by seconds, okay? Then you have to make a conscious decision. Do you want this to be dissolving in all your slide deck, the entire slide deck? Most of the case, probably yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply to all slides. So that means one to four is gonna have dissolved, five to four to five is gonna have dissolved. Don't trust me, let's see. So if I go to slide five, you'll notice that transition is saying dissolve, okay? Notice in the motion box that you have, you have an option to play it. So you can always test this, which comes really handy when we're dealing with the object animation. So it gives you a sneak peek. Not as well, um, it does, but I think it's better to test the slide transitions when we're in presentation mode or slideshow mo mode. So let's go ahead and go back to slide one. Now we made, we made the decision to skip slide two and three, and we made the decision to use dissolve in our transitions. So we're gonna see a difference when we're presenting now, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this if you have that um, going, you may not, but I'm gonna go ahead and click slideshow. And um, you can use the menu option on the left-hand side, the presenter bar a box now but you will then see depending on where you started i'm going to start from the beginning i'm just using my arrow key to get all the way back to the beginning and i'm going to notice that the next slide is not going to be that's right the google help is amazing right it didn't do that it skipped two and three and now i'm going to go to the next slide you will see that it does the dissolving um again 
it's kind of hard to see if you're not watching both, but just go to your next slide and you will see that it's dissolving as we go. So you can see the transition from different slides and I use the dissolve one. I can always go back and make a conscious decision and change it differently. This is another great example. It goes to the recording. Some of you, if I hit the arrow key and didn't select manual, it will automatically play and I'll talk over you. So that's why I like to make that conscious decision and push play. So um, again, I, I am, and I didn't do it for this one and you can see it's starting to play and that's annoying. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to hit escape to get out of there. I'm going to hit escape. Um, so again, really a lot of this is kind of getting you familiar with slides for those that are probably kind of new to slides um, or maybe never even used it. It's not the highly most used app. So I'm aware of that as well, but it can be used for multiple things. Think of it as an infograph. It could be used to make some fancy artwork if you choose to. So just don't think of it as a presentational tool. It can be used for many things. It can be used for a poster. Um, so just think outside the box when you're thinking of slides. It's very powerful when you are dealing with images. Um, and also, if you're using Google Drawing, you can copy and paste them in here. Um, just, just know that it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, I use them for thumbnails for YouTube. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. So lots of fun things you can do with it. Um, just be aware of that. With that, thank you so much for joining and being um, part of this training today. And I hope to see you soon in our next session, which is advanced Google Slides training. Thank you.